In this video, we will look at how to use LT Spice to simulate a regulated power supply circuit. Recall that a regulated power supply circuit converts AC to DC and is robust to changes in input voltage and or load resistance. The block diagram of a regulated power supply circuit is shown here. There are four main sub-blocks. The transformer steps down the large amplitude AC voltage to produce an AC voltage with a smaller amplitude. The bridge rectifier converts AC to pulsating DC. The capacitor filter converts pulsating DC to smooth DC with a ripple. Finally, the Zener regulator converts smooth DC to constant DC at the output. The input to the regulated power supply circuit is a sinusoidal signal. Typically, the voltage and frequency are either 240 volt RMS at 50 Hz frequency or 120 volt RMS at 60 Hz frequency. This map here, which is available on Wikipedia, shows the nominal voltage and frequency used by different countries in the world. In USA and Canada, 120 volt RMS at 60 Hz is used. In Australia, 240 volt RMS at 50 Hz is used. Many countries in Africa and Asia use voltage in the range 220 to 240 volt RMS at 50 Hz. In this video, we will assume that the input is 240 volt RMS at 50 Hz frequency. We use the component voltage to simulate the input to the regulated power supply circuit. For this component, we use the sine function and enter the DC offset, amplitude and frequency. The DC offset is set to zero the frequency is set to 50 Hz. For a sinusoid, the RMS value is related to the peak value by this relationship shown here. For 240 volt RMS, the peak value is 339.41 volts, which is set here. The next step is to simulate a transformer. The transformer is not available as a standard component within the LT Spice component library. However, we can easily model the transformer using coupled inductors as shown here. We model each winding of the transformer as an inductor. We add a Spice directive called the K statement to couple the windings. The syntax is shown here. Since this SPICE directive is a K statement, it starts with the letter K. L1 and L2 are the primary and the secondary inductors. The last parameter here is the mutual coupling coefficient, which we set to 1 to simulate perfect coupling with no leakage inductance. We also need to set the resistance of the primary winding to a very small value. This is to enable LT Spice to solve and simulate the circuit. Otherwise, we get an error. Once the case statement is applied, LT Spice automatically changes the normal inductor symbol to an inductor symbol with a visible phasing dot shown here, and this indicates each winding's phase. The transformer obeys the relationship shown here where V secondary denotes the voltage at the transformer secondary, V primary denotes the voltage at the transformer primary, which is 240 volt RMS at 50 Hertz frequency. N secondary is the number of turns in the secondary, and N primary is the number of turns in the primary, and lowercase n is the turns ratio. The turns ratio is proportional to the square root of the inductances and this can be used to set the turns ratio as desired. 
For instance, these values shown here give a turns ratio of 1 over 20. Using this principle, we can simulate our transformer in LTSpice. The SPICE directive can be accessed from the edit menu. In this simulation, we have set the series resistance to be a very small value. We are using the transient simulation, which can be accessed from the simulate menu. When we run this simulation, we, when lo we can look at the primary vol voltage and the secondary voltage. We can activate the cursor by clicking on any of these labels here. We can position the cursor to the peak value. We can see that the peak value of the input is 339.3 volts and the peak value of the output is around 17 volts as expected. Next we look at how to simulate the diode bridge. The diode bridge rectifier takes the sinusoidal waveform from the transformer secondary as input and produces a full wave rectified voltage at its output. The peak value of the rectified output voltage is the input voltage peak minus two diode drops. The popular rectifier diode models such as 1N4002 are not available by default in LTSpice. However, they can be easily added to LTSpice following the instructions shown here. These instructions are discussed in detail in a different video in this playlist. The link is included at the end of this video. Please pause the video now if you wish to follow and read these instructions in more detail. This shows the transformer and bridge rectifier circuit in LTSpice. If desired, we can right click on the diode and then click pick new diode and change to a different available diode model. We can run this simulation and look at the output voltage. We can see that the output voltage is a full wave rectified waveform. The transformer secondary is connected between nodes 1 and nodes 4. This node information is displayed in the bottom left corner. Thus we can add trace and display the transformer secondary voltage, which is voltage at node one minus voltage at node four. We can enable the cursor by right clicking any of the labels here. We can position the cursor at the peak value. We can see that the input to the bridge rectifier is an approximately 17 volt peak signal and the output voltage peak is about 15.53 volts which is approximately 1.4 volts less than V input peak as expected. The capacitor filter is simulated by adding a capacitor in parallel with the load resistor. The capacitor filter converts a pulsating DC input to a smoothed DC output with a ripple. The theory formulas needed to characterize the output of the capacitor filter are shown here. These can be readily obtained using any standard textbook on diodes. Assuming a secondary peak of about 17 volts, V output peak is about 15.6 volts. And for the given values of the resistor and the capacitor, the peak to peak ripple voltage can be shown to be approximately 1.5 volts. This is showing the transformer, bridge rectifier and smoothing capacitor filter. When we simulate, we can see the smooth DC output wave voltage waveform, which has a ripple. 
This initial part of the curve is the transient when the circuit is first switched on. After the initial transient, we have a periodic ripple. We can measure the ripple voltage and frequency by right clicking on this label and then associating first and second cursor with this waveform. This brings up the cursor window. We can position cursor 1 at the peak and we can position cursor 2 at the trough and this shows that the peak to peak ripple voltage is approximately about 1.15 volts. This is slightly less than the 1.5 volt expected from theory. This slight difference is to be expected due to the ideal assumptions made in the theory. To measure the ripple frequency, we reposition cursor 1. We can see that the ripple has a frequency of 100 Hz, which is double that of the frequency of the input signal. And this is as expected. The Zener regulator converts smooth DC to constant DC. The theory and explanation of a basic Zener regulator circuit is discussed in a different video in this playlist. The link is included at the end of this video. The 1N746 to 1N759 is a popular Zener diode family covering Zener voltages ranging from 3.3 .3 to 12 volt. The 1N750, which is a 4.7 volt Zener diode, is available by default within LTSpice. Other Zener diodes, such as 1N751, can be easily added to LTSpice following the instructions shown here. Please pause the video if you wish to study these instructions in more detail. By adding a Zener diode such as 1N751 to the circuit, we can now simulate the complete regulated power supply circuit. For instance, we can convert 240 volt RMS at 50 Hz on the input side to 5.1 volt DC at the output. This is the complete regulated power supply circuit in LTSpice. We can run this simulation and look at the output voltage. We can enable the cursor. We can see that the output voltage is about 5.1 volt DC as expected. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you can now confidently simulate regulated power supply circuits in LTSpice.